Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on Elasticsearch installation. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to install the Elasticsearch and how to verify the Elasticsearch whether it's working or not. For that, there are several steps. The very first step is installation of Elasticsearch software itself. Then we will review the directory structure for Elasticsearch. The next step is setting some environment variables. The third step that is setting environment variable is not a mandatory step, but for ease of the implementation or for ease of the usage of the Elasticsearch, it is good idea to set these environment variables. Next thing we'll do is we are going to review the properties files which comes with the Elasticsearch. And finally, we will execute one of the curl command to test whether the Elasticsearch is working or not. So let's start. In order to install Elasticsearch, we need to go to the Elasticsearch website that is Elastic.co. Under the given version, I'm using 7.8 version. You will see the section set up Elasticsearch and then installing Elasticsearch option. And under that, we will see the install directory. On this page, we will see several details. For example, if you are installing Elasticsearch for Windows system, then we have the Windows installer. If you are installing on Linux machine, then we have the corresponding package also. I'm going to install this Elasticsearch on Windows system, so I chose this option. We also have the like user-friendly UI to install the Elasticsearch but that will be deprecated in upcoming releases or will not have the full control to install so it is good idea to install using the command prompt the package or the zip file which we need to download present under the download and install section we need to download the first one because this is more stable one the other one has the additional feature but it might require some license. For example, if you're going to use the x pack features like security, monitoring, alerting, etc., you might need those features to be enabled and for that you need the license. But we'll go with the first option. It is a zip file, so you have to just click it and it will download. I have already downloaded the zip file. Here is the zip file. Let's extract it. Now we are done with the extraction. Let's explore the directory structure under this Elasticsearch. Under this folder, we have Elasticsearch and the version of the Elasticsearch that is 7.8. Inside this, we have the folders such as bin directory, which holds the, all the executable files. Then we have the config directory. See all the configurations required for Elasticsearch are maintained under this directory. Then we have the JDK that is the Java version. If you remember Elasticsearch is developed using Java. Hence we need to have the Java installed in your system. Then the li library. So all the libraries which are required for Elasticsearch are provided here. Then we have the logs. Currently log folder is empty. But we'll see when it is get populated. Then we have the, some modules and plugins. If you remember, for several components of the Elasticsearch, we can add as a plugin. So those can be copied here. Mostly those are the uh, .jar files. We can copy here and we can enable those plugins in the Elasticsearch. Then we have the license detail and some additional details which you can read using this read dot uh, file. Let's see uh, what present in the, under the bin directory. Under the bin directory, we have elasticsearch.bat and similarly, we have other installation files. Then we have the config folder. Under the config folder, we have files such as elasticsearch.yml, jvm.options, log4j, Two dot properties. Elasticsearch.yml 
is a very important file in the Elasticsearch. It holds the, all the configuration such as node name, cluster name on which this Elasticsearch will be installed or will be running. So let's open this file and explore a little more. In this file, some default configuration is already present such as cluster, node, paths, then we have memory, network and discovery and gateway and other options. By default, this configuration is commented out. In case you need to modify your cluster name or node name, you can come here and update this property. If you are installing Elasticsearch for your learning purpose or for your normal usage, no need to update this property. So we'll keep all these properties as is. Let's see jvm.options file. jvm.options file contains all the information related to the Java. As the Elasticsearch runs on the JVM, we need to configure some of the properties such as JVM memory parameters or garbage collection parameters. In higher environments such as UAT or production, we definitely need to modify the JVM properties to suit our the elastic search requirements. Let's go ahead and see the log4j properties. Log4j properties contains the details about the, the logging, where the logs will be generated for the elastic search, whether you need error log only or you need the debug log. It depends on situation to situation. If you are investigating any issue in the elastic search, you might need the debug log. Even the the format of your log file name, whether you need to include date or not, all those can be controlled using this file. We'll keep as is, we're not going to modify anything in this file. There are several other configuration properties also present, such as role underscore mapping dot yml, roles dot yml, users and user roles. If you remember, in our Elastic Stack tutorial, we saw that there are several options for security configuration where we can configure the users and roles and that time this configuration will be helpful definitely for security purpose we need to update these files as well now we saw how to extract the zip file for elastic search then we saw the directory structure and we also saw the properties such as elastic search yml jvm.options and log4j Let's go ahead and set some environment variable. We need to set these three variables Elasticsearch Home, Elasticsearch PathCon, and Java Home. Java Home you already might have set. If not, you need to set that as well. So, what are the values for Elasticsearch Home and Elasticsearch PathCon? When we extract the files, it creates the directory structure and the directory label Elasticsearch with its version is called as its Elasticsearch Home. And under this directory, we have another folder called config. That's not, nothing but the Elasticsearch PathCon. So we'll go ahead and configure this. I'll go to the system properties, environment variables, and let's set the system variables. This is the name, and this is the value. Take it. Then let's go ahead and create the next variable. This is the variable. And this is value. So we are done with configuration of these variables. We also configure the Java home and click OK. Let's go ahead and open the command prompt. Here we need to go to the Elasticsearch home directory and the command is cd which will just go to that directory. Then we have to go to the executable folder that is bin and from here we have to execute the Elasticsearch.bat file. This will start the Elasticsearch server. We can monitor what are the things going on. So it first check the whether it has a compatible JDK version. For now, it says in future release, it might get use the JDK 11, but currently JDK 1.8 is also supported. 
then it will set some variables it is showing the what are the rows are configured and this is the location now we can see the elastic search is successfully started on localhost and port is 9200 we can also see the security is disabled because we are not using xpack which requires additional license so we are good to proceed our next step and that is nothing but the making sure our servers are working fine now let's go ahead and see whether the elastic search is successfully installed or not by executing one of the command for that we have to go to the command prompt i will open another command prompt window here we have to give the command curl hyphen capital x and the command is get and we need to provide the server name in our case it's a local host then we have to provide the port that is 9200 then we have to use forward slash and the keyword pretty so this is the command to check whether the default index is generated properly or not i will hit enter button and now we can see this curl command actually hitting the elastic search server and giving us the response back which will give us the what is the version of the elastic search that is 7.8 and what time this installation happened we can also see the lucene version 8.5.1 and some other parameters so this way we can install elasticsearch in our system thank you for watching this video if you like this video then please do not forget to subscribe my channel and in our next lecture we are going to see how to install a kabana which is used along with the elasticsearch